Well, well, well. What do we have here? A new fishing spot. Yeah. What is going on guys? Welcome to another fishing episode. Today we are trout fishing on this beautiful river, my local river, and it's crawfish season folks. It is officially crawdad season here. The crawdads should be out in droves. A couple weeks ago I saw a few um, down in the water. Of, of course they're down in the water, not going to be anywhere else, but I saw a few and, but they were just coming out and when crawdads are coming out of hibernation, they're like covered in mud. They have like just stuff sticking to them still. And the crawdads that I caught were covered in mud and had stuff sticking to them. That was like a couple weeks ago, so they should be out in full force now. So today we have crawdads, we have trout, and we're just going to explore how fun fish the river for the day. So the first lure I'm starting off with is this little Rapala jerkbait. Rainbow trout colored, just absolutely dynamite for bigger trout. Perfect summertime lure. All right, guys. First cast of the day. Ooh, this is gonna be a good day. What? I have one, guys, I have one. Guys, I have a fish already. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, guys? This is not staged. This is not staged. Couldn't it? Oh, it's a good one too. Are you kidding me? I snagged him weird. His mouth is like wide open. I kind of like snagged him weird. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Yes! Sorry, me and a little quiet because there are people around. Guys, look at this. Look at this gorgeous first trout of the day. On the first cast within seconds. On that little Rapala jerk bait. Couldn't it? I mean, are you kidding me? First cast. That is so cool. Are you kidding me? So I had to be a little bit quiet. There was a lady that was standing right on the other side with her dog and she was staring at me. I think she was like, why is he talking to himself over there? I don't think she knew what I was doing. She, she was a little bit older. Um, a lot of times people don't know, they don't see the GoPro or whatever, they don't understand. So it just looks like somebody talking to themselves while they're fishing. But um, anyway, wow, first cast of the day. Got one, got one. I thought it was a snag. Oh, guys, we got a good fish. We got a good fish. Oh my gosh, we had a big fish. We had a big fish. Oh my gosh. Oh, what the? It's a sucker. It's a big sucker. Are you kidding me? Guys, are you? Look, and he bit the jerk bait. Look at that. A sucker fish. It's full on in his mouth. Either that was just pure chance or else that might, or else he actually, for whatever reason, attacked it. Guys, if you're new to fishing, sucker fish do not eat lures. They're just bottom suckers. They just eat algae and stuff. Good grief, that is a first for me. Huh, you know what guys? We might save this. We might save this. I could use them for crawdads. What do you think? Should we use them for crawdads? These make great crawdad bait. All right, so I knocked them out there. This trash fish will actually serve three purposes. Number one, we're gonna try to eat a slice of him, compare him to the trout. Number two, um, we can use him for crawdad bait. And number three, in case a little mink comes along, there are a lot of mink in this area, we'll feed him some. All right, my friends, new spot here. I don't think I've ever fished this one before. Throw a fish down there. You know we're gonna attract a mink with dead fish now. Whew. Water is cold. First time wading in. But you know what? It's not as bad as it can be. This water can get so icy cold. Feels like it came off a glacier. Right by all that wood. I have learned recently that trout are kind of like bass and that they hang around around wood a lot um they don't hang tight to the cover like a bass does they don't they're not like whoa i just got crushed Did you guys see that bite <laughs> um oh my goodness that was a hard strike they don't hang out in the cover like bass do but they will hang out definitely near it 
All right, well, let's, there's a fish right down there, guys. <laughs> Whoa, there we go. Whoa, did you guys see that bite? Did you see that bite? Nice, fish on. Yes. This has to be a wild one. Look at how hard he bit it and how hard he's fighting. Yep, yep, yep. Definitely. Dauphinotle has orange, or like pinky orange fins. Wild trout here, guys. Ooh, poor fella. I hooked him right in the eye. We might be keeping this one. Hooked him right in the top of like the head there. Oh, that's a beautiful fish though. Yeah, he's pretty messed up. We're gonna keep this one. Sorry about that, man. There we go, guys. Another nice little trout there. Um, you can tell he's wild. Look at the pink bottom fins and stuff like that. Nice. Ooh, this is gonna taste good. This is amazing, folks. I already have three fish. Two of them are trout, which is what I wanted for a little lunch, a little dinner, whenever I decide to eat them. The limb is actually six, but I want to keep two for the, the little dinner today. And an hour into the day, we already got them. And uh, all we need now are crawfish. Alrighty, my friends, we are at a brand new spot here. Not brand new, like I've been here before, but you know what I'm saying. New spot today. If you watch old videos, you recognize this spot here. Oh yeah. Oh, it's kind of low compared to what it what it usually is. Interesting. Oh, I just saw, there was a trout that just jumped right there. Huh. I'm looking. Oh, there are first floaters I've seen of the year. There aren't as many big rocks and stuff around here. There might be a few crawdads out, but uh, it's not as not looking as good as it used to. There's one. Finally. All right, let's get him. Oh, oh, no, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. You guys see him? Oh, oh, there he goes. He's trying to get away. No, we got to keep track of him. Keep track. Oh, this is a tricky one. This is a feisty one. Just tire him out. Grab him. Yes. Guys, the very first crawdad in this river of 2020. That's what I'm talking about, folks. Yes, they're out. Hallelujah. Nice. All right, let's put our plan into action. We're going to take this sucker fish, cut straight down. I saw my brother do this before. He was actually the first one to discover this for attracting crawdads. There we go. We just lay the fish open like that. All right, so we got him on a stringer there. And I'm just going to toss him right in this pool and uh, let him sink to the bottom. And the, the stringer is just so we can retrieve him easier later. But we're gonna leave him right there. We look at all the oils and stuff coming off of him. Ooh, I think he's gonna attract a lot. So we'll let that sit down there for a couple of hours. And uh, in the meantime, we'll just do some fishing and uh, crawdadding. Crawdadding, is that a word?
right, you guys, got a few crawdads, but I want to show y'all something. I have here an Abu Garcia Toby. This was sent to me by a subscriber from Ireland. It's a little silver, well, not silver, more of a kind of a angry rainbow trout color, actually. Connor, that was his name. Connor from Ireland sent me this sweet spoon here. I'm gonna give it a whirl in the river. Look at this spot here. Woo. First cast with the uh, Abu Garcia spoon, by the way. I wanna announce the first cast every time now. Got one, got one, guys. On the spoon, on the spoon. Yes, yes. What do we got? Oh, it's small, but hey, look, little trout, <laughs> little baby trout. That is a fierce little, oh no, he just got off. Oh man, but there we go. First fish ever on the spoon, Connor, thank you so much. He said it was a rainbow trout slayer, and I thought, hmm, that looks good. By the way, guys, for all of you who've sent me stuff, it doesn't always make it in videos. What I do is I put all the stuff in a box. If it fits in a video, if I'm about to head out and I kind of look through my box of all the stuff you guys have sent me if something fits i will include it in a video but just to let you know if you guys do send me stuff it doesn't always make it into a video all right my friends at a brand new spot here we have spots like this big boulder and all kinds of boulders all around here in this kind of eddy pool perfect spot for crawls Oh, look at that lobster right there, guys. Oh, I almost thought, I th he almost got away from me. Look, we're gonna have claw meat and tail meat in that one. Well, my friends, I am hungry. I skipped lunch, actually. And uh, so I'm starving. We're gonna go, we're gonna check the sucker fish, see if there's anything on it, and we're gonna start cooking. All right, let's check the sucker fish here. We're gonna sneak up on him. Hmm. I don't see, oh wait, did something take off? Crawdad might have taken off as he saw me coming, but you know what, I don't see really anything down there. Well, that is curious, folks. I, uh, I don't see anything around it, unless there's a crawdad, like, hiding out underneath it. Well, that was an epic fail. Um, I guess the only thing now to do is leave it on the bank. Maybe a mink will come for it. You know what I mean? I'm going to see if there are any crawdads under these rocks here. I have a hard time believing that they would be ignoring a fish like that. That tasty treat. Oh, a soft one. Guys, I literally just found this crawdad that's molted. He's really, really soft. And under that rock, I thought there were two of them. No, this is just the shell he molted out of. And see how it's like slightly smaller than him? That is cool. I've never seen that in all my days of crawdadding. I've never caught a crawdad that just, I mean, he is, you, you could, I'm going to be able to eat him just, um, he, like he doesn't have any claws, like even his claws are soft. That is so crazy. I'm going to be able to eat him whole. That is nuts. Well, guys, after turning over all these rocks, I'm kind of thinking one of the reasons why the sucker fish may not have worked is because there weren't that many crawdads in this area. I flipped over all the rocks and I only saw two other ones. So it was cool seeing that molted one. I've, I've never seen that before, a crawdad that just came out. But um, anyway, let's uh, find a little beachy area. Let's cook. And here we are at our own little private beach. So you guys want a great date idea? Grab a little picnic and come down to a spot like this, right in the city, 
you don't have to be near the ocean. I mean, ocean's obviously the best, but find a little spot like this along the river, a little picnic. All right, need a rock or a hard service to cook on. I did have a rock here that I used a couple years ago. That's probably, um, probably, what the? Guys, we got we got something. Hopefully, this isn't is this stolen? Oh no, we got a homeless person. That's a that's a sleeping bag. <laughs> hmm. What do we got here? Probably drugs or oh wait, I see brew, or some beer. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Homeless person down here. Uh. We might, uh, we might find a different spot. I don't want Krusty to come down here and, and uh, give me a hard time. All right, folks. Time to clean some trout. Ooh, 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 this is gonna be delicious. I'm just doing a simple gut. We're gonna cut the head off. It's so fast. Look how fast this is. Just go straight up through that open the trout up remove all the guts throw those out there for the crawdads actually we'll probably throw those farther out there so that yeah people don't come down to the beach and they're like fish guts laying there that'd be kind of gruesome we're gonna grab these real quick toss them out there rinse our trout off just take your fingers all you have to do you have to get aggressive with it but all you can do just just take your fingers and grab all the guts out of there and boom, you're done. You don't have to scale trout because the scales are so small. So there you go. That is trout cleaning 101. That's why I love trout because it's so simple. Oh. Whew. Feels good to sit down. Got my view of the river here. I am hungry, folks. I am super hungry. The plan of attack first is to boil up the crawfish and then we're gonna cook the trout so we can let the crawfish soak in this brand new concoction that I have to show you guys. So first thing we gotta do folks is let this water come to a boil because we are using straight up river water. There's some rule like always that river water, like water that's not been treated boil for five minutes or something like that. Some survivalist rule. So this is gonna be one of the most unusual crawdad boils I've ever done. We have here ramen noodles. I thought of that literally last minute. Before I was about to leave, I thought, what if you added ramen noodles to a crawfish boil? Like, you already have flavored water. Might as well, might be something cool. We're gonna flavor the water with Zatarain's shrimp and cr crawfish shrimp and crab boil in a bag. And then we have this blackened Cajun seasoning for the trout. We're also going to add some Everglades into the water, and of course we got to add salt. One of the first things we will add to the water is our uh, shrimp and crab boil bag. There has all kinds of seasonings in it. We want that to soak, and kind of like a kind of like a tea bag. All right. Ooh, -hoo. water's getting dark, getting good and dark. Next, we shall add the crawdads. Let's start with the biggest one right there mongo crawdad drop him right in there 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 we go ouch one got me and there we are folks we'll let those boil up and then we will add after we've let those crawdads cook for a second or two because the noodles are going to cook i think faster than the crawfish let's let them cook for a couple minutes and we're going to add the ramen to them and you know what, folks? We're gonna add the little flavor packets. This is pork flavor. I'm gonna add that to the water as well. We will have some flavorful noodles and crawdads going on here. Add one more packet. Ooh, did I overdo it? Ooh, I may have overdone it. I overcommitted now. Hello. Good, Good how are you? Okay. How are y'all doing? This guy's doing smart. <laughs> I'm actually making a YouTube video right now. Are you? Uh-huh. 
Oh. Guys, I don't know about y'all. That's looking good. Ramen noodles are cooking about three minutes usually. And they look, they've changed a different color. I think they've absorbed the flavoring. Got the nice bright red crawdads there. Sweet. Folks, there you go. <laughs> I love trying new things. You know what? We're gonna try a bite before I start get started cooking the trout. We're gonna try a bite of this. Say a quick prayer. All right. You know what, guys, to be honest, that's overkill. Um, those noodles, they absorbed way too much of the Zatarans seasoning. They're very, very Zatarany, y but, um, got some people on the river. They're very Zatarany, but, uh, they're kind of too much. I mean, they're good, but you better love Zatarans crawfish boil, because they are 100% like that's all you taste. You know, since these are the first crawfish of the year, I just gotta try one. Oh, little tail there. First crawfish, 2020. Mm. I miss that flavor. All right, so we're gonna set this aside for now and let those crawdads absorb more of the uh, seasoning. Let's add some. Butter. Ooh, uh oh, butter. Butter's taken off. Did you see how he escaped there? If you've watched old videos before, it has been a long time since I've used this seasoning, but this has been one of my favorites. In fact, it inspired my Ace Videos first cast seasoning. We're gonna lay a layer of that down. Take our trout. Ooh. <coughs> oh, that. Is on. <coughs> Ooh, the flavor. I forgot how potent this stuff. This stuff goes airborne. Roll it around in that butter there. Whoa, almost lost her. Didn't realize I was teetering on the edge. So the way to tell that a trout is done is you see how this half is kind of clearish and then the other half has that white look? That's the cook side. Whenever it's cooked through, it turns white. And you can see we've cooked half of it. Let's flip it over. Oh, yes, just slightly blackened. Mm. Seasoning's doing its work there. Oh, look, the meat flaking off the trout. It is definitely done. Oh, man. And then we'll add some of our steeping crawfish. Ooh. Oh, look, here's our soft one, guys. Look how wrinkly he is. He's all, <laughs> that is crazy. Wow. Oh, oh. Ah. Mm. Mm. Check out this crawdad, guys. The, the really soft one that we found. Look, the fork just pokes. Well, it doesn't quite poke all the way through him. Yeah, it does, yeah. There you go. Little soft one. Bon Appetit. <laughs> There's this hard little like rock, too. There were two like hard little, almost stones inside of him. That was really weird. Like it was literally, they were literally hard as rocks. Wow, that is the first crawdad I've ever had that I could just eat straight through and it tasted good. I've heard that like in places, um, like in Florida and stuff like that, where they catch the blue crabs, the blue crabs are soft at a certain time of year. You just cook them whole and eat them whole. I thought that sounds really cool. I guess it's the same way with crawdads. Mm. We basically have, we basically make crawdad soup today. That packs a punch. <laughs> it packs a punch. Don't use a whole pack like that of seasoning and one little boil of water. Whew. 
Those ramen noodles, the crawdads are really good, but the ramen noodles absorb way too much. Ooh, -hoo. yes, claw meat. Mm. And the claw meat's always tender, more tender than the rest of the crawfish. So as I was sitting there finishing my dinner, I kept watching the two homeless guys across the little beachy area from me, and they were just hanging out. And they definitely seemed like two lost souls. And I really wanted to witness to them. I wanted to give them the Christian gospel. But I had just met them, and to me, it seems a little bit intrusive to say to basically a total stranger, hey, uh, where do you think you're going to go when you die? So I decided to go about it a little bit differently. Do you have any plates on you? No? Plastic? Would you guys like a fish? All right. So I cooked them up the other trout and we kind of chatted a little bit. And then while they were eating the trout, I have in the back of my phone case this gospel tract. It actually looks like a million dollar bill. Kind of similar to a regular dollar bill, but it's pretty obvious right away that it's fake. But people love it because it looks so cool. I'll put a link to these in the description if you want to check them out. And I just left it on one of the guy's coats while I was cleaning up. And uh, that way I could... Uh, to me, it's a great way to witness to somebody, give them the gospel without being too intrusive. It was nice talking with you. <laughs> Y'all have a good evening. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. You never know what could happen <laughs> when you come out here. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching. I had, I had a flex. This is so much fun. It's my favorite thing to do ever. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.